Facebook, uh, Facebook link for your videos of uh, uh, Amazon so so that everyone can see your books as well so we can speak while we are I'm doing this no worries okay Steve you want me to go on your the app you just sent me the 422 426 you know but you're already on so you're already here so oh we're here and you're, you're live we are all live go? right now where'd you go all this time yeah we're already live so we're fine so one thing about steve is he's always had a good sense of humor <laughs> mm -hmm. i tell you i don't think i would have lasted in gaza for six years if i didn't <laughs> oh boy well you yeah. know who you do you know our friend toss of course yes yeah he was with me a couple of weeks ago on on this live stream yeah oh praise god yeah amazing I'm trying, I'm trying to plug him into our his people there into our friends there but i don't know where they are after 25 years i spiritually it's been a while yeah at least they had a start when they were kids yes well you know what that seed is uh that seed is a powerful thing so you know my disadvantage my disadvantage the last few years of our ministry as a white face i pulled back and I let the other guys go for it. And I have to trust, I have to trust what the other guys were telling me about what they were doing. Yes. So anyway, we know that, uh, what do they say? God knows everything. That's right. You know, Allah, Allah, Kula, Shain, Kadir. Allah, Kula, Shain, Kadir. Allah is not, not something that I would proclaim ever <laughs> after being an ex-Muslim and knowing what it is. Oh me, oh me. Well, we won't get into that one. That's another, <laughs> that's another book. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was a Muslim for over 38 years of my life. Yeah. Uh, and a practicing Muslim. And I was uh, uh, um, a Sayyid. And you know yeah. what Sayyid and Shahs are. Yeah, yeah. You the have rank. been there. And um, almost so, like Kula, but not quite. <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, so this is this is how problematic it is. And like when I found out, I was like, oh my goodness, that's that's what it. Oh yeah. So now you must, I I you must have known an old friend of mine. Uh, which one? A guy named Annie Shurosh. Annie Shurosh? No, unfortunately, he I do was, not. He was uh, from the Holy Land, but lived in Alabama. And he used to teach people that Allah, Allah was a uh, pagan god. It wasn't the real god that we worship. And that is true, because only, ask any Muslim. Only, yeah, the only difficulty is, is they have to change the Arabic language for us. It's and that's what happened. There's no other. There's no other word in the Arabic language for Allah than Allah. Like in the English language, there's no other word for God than God. And God originally was a pagan name, Gud, or whatever. It, it was a Norwegian, uh, Scandinavian, one of the gods of the, the 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 trees or the the poles or whatever so all of our language is is weakness it's got a weakness to it and somebody asked me well do they worship the same god i said well i don't even know if you worship the same god that i worship because i can't get into your head and figure out what your god is and i sometimes have a problem with my own head as to wondering uh, who my god is and the only way i can really help myself is to look at jesus yes praise you know, god he, he came and he took our flesh and faced the same problems and the same temptations and everything that we faced so i can look at him and say well what was is this the same god and the reason i know it is because he gives us the spirit the problem Amen. The problem with the Islamic God is 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 um, bila ruh. It has yes. no. It has a. It has a, a human spirit, but it doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that was Muhammad's weakness. 
is he didn't know who the spirit was. Mun Yeah. He didn't know who the spirit was. It's the same problem that uh, Pilate had in tr the trial of Jesus. He said, who is this man? Mun San. He didn't know who this person really was. And the Muhammad had the same problem with the spirit. He didn't know who the spirit was. And he said, the spirit meant a law. Only God knows. Yeah. And so it's it's uh, it became, in a sense, it became a Christian heresy or a Jewish heresy without the spirit. Mm. So much of this has to do with our understanding of language and how it develops. And um, who knows? I think uh, it's what somebody has to find out someday. And maybe when we get to heaven, the Lord will tell us whether the name Allah even existed before Muhammad. We know that they knew El Ilah and they knew the various Manat and Uzza and all the other gods, but whether they even knew a word, Allah, mm. or whether Muhammad himself and his generation invented this term. But what happened, good or bad is the entire Arab world that the Arab uh, Muslims conquered took on that name for God rather than any other name. I even have friends that one time got into this argument and they said, what is it? Uh, what's the term? Uh, Hoda. We'll just use Hoda. Hoda is God. <laughs> well, who is Hoda? Hoda is a Persian, Persian God. Oh, Hoda. Yeah. Hoda Hafiz. Yes. And so we were limited in human beings to understand all this. So, uh, you know, that's that's one of the problems we have. Yeah. With all my Christian Arab friends in Nazareth and in Bethlehem and Jerusalem, when they pray to God, they pray to Allah. So that's a, this is a, the difficulty we have with languages. Mm hmm. Anyway, that's that's only part. I, I'd, I'd write another book. But <laughs> And as you said, as you said, uh, stated already, that <clears throat> Allah is a term that we we do not have any references anywhere before yeah. Muhammad that we do not see. Yeah. Um, and if the Muslims, because Muslims actually have to say, uh, rather because I know it from our Imam saying it, because I asked these questions when I was. Uh -huh. uh, uh, being in doubt and I was asking this question. Uh -huh. So they showed me certain websites and they said uh, it was Al-Ilah yeah. and which well, actually the means the God. Yeah, the that's God. original, the God. Yeah. But the problem is that yeah. how did it become Allah? I know. Because, it's a good, yeah. And you then La. Yeah. Sorry. The other the other it's, situation is as we learn. Now Steve, he's doing his master's. He's He's the guy who's going to start answering these questions for us. Uh, you know, the Ar Arabic language was not a, a language in print. Mm -hmm. well, it, yes. didn't even have, it didn't even have the alphabet, all of this, until Muhammad. Uh, even yeah. after until Muhammad, because well, till, yeah, till, yeah. till 800 AD, there you go. You had no alphabets. There uh, 850 you go. AD, there were no alphabets. Yeah. So we're limited. We're limited because of our lack of understanding and how this whole language developed. So, wow, uh, it's a disadvantage. It's a disadvantage. But the other disadvantage was is that the Christians at that time, the believers, uh, didn't have the foresight to put the Bible into that language. Hmm. Because that language was not even evolved, like you already said that. That, that language yeah. was not even evolved. Allah, if he right. is God, right. and Muhammad, if he is a prophet, he wrote a book which is Mubin in yeah. a language which didn't even had full alphabets That's right. at that particular time. That well, is that, how bad it is. That's a great miracle, see? <laughs> this is the great miracle, man. The yeah. one. <laughs> So there's a lot, there's a lot still we don't understand uh, until the Arabs then conquered all the Christians around the Middle East. Then they started putting it into the era of the Arabic language to defend their own faith, to stay believers in the Lord. Wow. 
Uh, yeah, and so, then they put the Arabic Allah into Bible. The first and the oldest scripture that we can find yeah. are written in 865. They are called Syriac uh, Codex number 151. Yeah. And that's why you will not find Allah anywhere in Arabic Bible before that. But rather, there will be no Arabic Bible before that. Now, baby, and, uh, you know more than I do about it. You have to write the book about it. Get on him, Steve. Make him get this thing so let's, we can get educated. I'm telling you, that's, great. that's good stuff. <laughs> that's really well, good stuff. I'm learning all this stuff for you, man. I, I didn't know any of this stuff, man. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, but the thing I'm wondering... Why, this, is why I don't, uh, this is why I don't argue. Uh, I don't waste my time... Uh, arguing about this thing, you know, I know where I know where the whole idea came. Now let me let me give you my view, my read on it. Mm -hmm. I was in the United States. I think it was maybe it was either seventy four to seventy six when I was doing this project dialogue interfaith with Muslims, or it was in nineteen. Um, around the year two thousand, it may be nineteen ninety five. I was in America. I get a call from Jerusalem. It's an American fellow married to a Jewish Messianic believer. And he's asking me, is Allah the same God that we worship? The God that the, the Arabs are praying to in, in the Middle East. Is this the same God we worship? And I gave him this explanation that the word Allah is something that they, that's the only word we have for God in the Arabic language, unless we want to use El Ilah and that kind of thing. And it's very Islamic. It's the Islamic word. And that the Christians started using it in, in the Middle East. Uh, and that whole idea that this, uh, you know, Allah is, is a satanic word and it's not a Christian word and all this, I think started back then from this Jewish, this messianic uh, input. And I started seeing it pop up in, in various things after that time. So I think this is more of a recent creation. I don't know that the Christians or the Arabs ever argued about this thing before the like 1990 or 1995. That's another interesting thing to, to check on where these references to uh, these doubts, a question mark about using the name Allah for mm -hmm. God came up. It may be a late, if it's a late thing, it's, it's, I know where it started. <laughs> well, you know, the, uh, like in Algeria and in Morocco, you know, they're having such a huge revival among the Muslims that are, I mean, the Muslims are, so many are getting saved, especially from like the Berber and the... Yeah, uh, yeah. well, they were originally Christians. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? They, uh, when they sing in their songs to Jesus, they sing to Isa. They Isa. Sing to Isa. So they don't okay, that's, that's another hole. That's another hole of birth. <laughs> so, by the way, just to ask, I'm going to ask you a question not to put you in a hot seat. But when you remove the Aleph from Allah, uh -huh. does it remain the same for a meaning of Allah? Because if you read Alhamdulillah, there is no yeah. Aleph there. That's right. You're right. So exactly. if it is a proper name for yeah. God, yeah. you cannot remove a harf from there. Exactly. So how how that, does that, that make a, sense in your, in your answering? Point, that is a point that I have never thought about. And I congratulate you. That's worth another book. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You have all these book ideas. Habibi, Habibi. <laughs> so uh, I, I would rather... I would rather go with a certain thing that Dan Gibson showed in his Sacred City. Uh -huh. Once again, we are talking about theories because we do not have any proofs. So do not hold me on this. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> the Sacred City, he showed the moon god over uh -huh. there in yeah, yeah, multiple yeah. locations. Uh -huh. And La is a name, as we know from the other texts, yeah. Uh, is a name of a moon god of yeah. that particular time. Oh yeah. And when we say Al in Hebrew, 
L is E L L in El, Hebrew actually El, pronounced El, as God. Yeah. It is pronounced as God, but in Al in Arabic is pronounced as the. Yeah. So no matter how you look at it, the la or God la, no matter how you may yeah. look at it, yeah. Allah is actually a combination of two words, yeah. whether you would call it L as in Hebrew L sure. la or Al as in the Arabic la. It yeah. actually pronounced as a pagan god name, the La. Right. right. So, uh, and that are, is why, yeah, that that is why when you remove the Aleph, and you just have Lam over there, that is a connective adjective with the Alhamd, Lilla, which yeah, actually right. becomes two La, exactly. as That's in the all. English word two with La, and it becomes all praise to La, which is a moon god. Oh, but mate. once again, this is a theory. <laughs> and uh, oh boy, they're getting in deep, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it's so true. This whole thing, the other that's so interesting. The other one about Isa. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, please. See you guys not having now, Steve. He should know this since he's actually a crossbreed. He's he's from the Holy Land, so he's no he should know enough about Hebrew. And their beginnings, you know, they, uh, the Jews today, this very day, in order to curse the name of Jesus, in order to get their children not to believe in him, they call him Yeshu, not Yeshua. Oh. Yeshua means God is salvation. Oh, I see. Okay. It's the name of their prophet, uh, Joshua. And, okay, right. Yes. And the Christians, Yeshua, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, that's the proper way to say it. But they grow up learning as children. Mm -hmm. His name is Yeshu. Yeshu. Oh. Which means may his name be cursed. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. That was uh, in my book, actually. Uh, action, my book. goodness, you are a knowledge. You are, no, you are a knowledge. <laughs> this is, seven years in the Holy Land. This is uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Year 100 down in uh, Yavne, south of south of Tel Aviv, south of Romley, where I used to live. Uh, they had the first curse in the year 100 put into the uh, the prayers, the synagogue prayers. A curse on the name of Jesus. Wow. So that the Christian believers, the Messianic believers, the Jews, which were a good beginning of a majority of, of Messianic Jews, like the New Testament is written to, they would not pronounce that curse against Jesus. So they sent them out of the synagogue, they kicked them out. So they used this curse to get rid of the believers in the synagogues. Wow. And so I'm suspecting it can be this thing about Isa could either be using that same idea in Arabic. Wow. Let me connect it further. Let Muhammad, me connect it further. Sorry, Muhammad picked it up from the Jews in, in Medina, Mecca and Medina. He got rid of them in Mecca. He sent them they're all in Medina, and he was always arguing with them. And they, he probably heard them call the name of Jesus, Yeshu. Mm. So he may have been copying that, and it came out for him Isa. Oh. Or uh, he could have, uh, you know, simply got mixed up like he did with other things in the scripture mm -hmm. and got the name mixed up with one of the other prophets. And, and to connect to this, because we were talking the other day with Steve wearing a noon on his shirt, yeah. Nisara, and we know they are Nazareth's. Uh -huh. Sarah is from the Nazareth, and so yeah. now this all makes sense that those were the thrown away people from the Nazareth. They yeah. came down. They were called in by the Arabs. They were called Nisari or Nisaran yeah. exactly. or Nisara, yeah. and then they were saying Isa or Yesh. Uh, uh, how did you pronounce it? Yeshu. Yeshu, which became Ishu or Isha. Good be. Like, it it all kind of makes sense. Yeah. Till uh, t t in in theory, it all kind of now makes sense how Nisara came into being, how yeah, Isa was, came uh, into being. Yes. Ani, Ana, Nasrani. 
Yeah, I am from Nisar. Nisara. Nazareth. I lived in Nazareth 26 years. Wow. Nice. Ibn and Nasri, I'm could be called a son of Nazareth. Yeah. And they use this Netzer, the the whole idea, the whole word Nasra and Nazareth comes from the word Netzer, which also has other meanings in Hebrew. And uh, all yeah. the, this is the reason I um, I don't get involved normally with discussion with people over the meaning of these words is, is this God the same God and all that? Because for one thing, spiritually, <laughs> I have no way of knowing what another man's God is. Jesus says, I have to see the works. I have to see, I have to know the spirit in that person. And he'll be, he'll prove it by his works as to what God he believes in. Yeah, you know, and, uh, I agree. So that's where I usually leave it. Um, but anyway, you guys, you guys are young and you're smart and you've got the background to get into this more deeply. <laughs> I'm that young. <laughs> but our knowledge is nowhere near your knowledge. You have opened up a lot of information right now, yeah. which kind of fix the pieces of the puzzles <laughs> in, in yeah. a more better way, quite frankly. We say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, I've got to uh, go deliver pizza in in hey. all of my. Hey, I, you, know, you have my address, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever get down there, you know, I hope I hope we get together. Uh, I, I look forward to getting together and having lunch and stuff. I don't know if you saw this, uh, Brother Ray, but. I did a debate with one of my cousins before this, uh, right before this uh, live stream. I did one really? with my cousin. And the biggest problem he had is the fact that I'm delivering pizza. And <laughs> that was a huge issue. He said, you're not, you don't deserve to be talking about Jesus and, the, and right. when you're delivering pizza. <laughs> it's allowed, Catherine. <laughs> I figured, boy, that's the least of my problems, man. <laughs> well, God bless. And so much, I'm, is it Abdul, Abdul Muhammad, the other fellow on, on the phone with us? Uh, yes. Abdul Muhammad, yes. He's a. Did yeah. you just befriend me on Facebook? Uh, probably. And I also sent you a friend request what? on Facebook as well. Yes. Yeah. What, what was the name you used on Facebook? So I know who. Adam Seeker. Same name, Adam Seeker. Way to go, man. What a great name. Yeah, that's uh, something I, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I started when I, I created my website. Praise uh, God. Where well, I was writing God the articles. And, and uh, God keep you and we'll, we'll put you on our prayer list and our people here who are praying will pray for you. I know this, it's their challenges, but uh, we studied uh, Hebrews, oh gosh, maybe 12 or 13 today that the God... God disciplines the son that he loves. His chasten and his discipline, even the hardships that come upon you are for the benefit of your growth and the benefit of others as they see you grow in the Lord. Amen. I, and I said, I told them that the Lord has worked overtime on me because a year ago I had a heart attack, a stroke and a fasciotomy and they cut my arm from my, el from my palm all the way to my elbow. Oh my goodness! I let the oh. pressure off because they messed uh, messed up going into my heart. I was eighty four years old then. Wow! God caught up with me. He <laughs> caught up on the discipline that He hadn't been giving me all those years. Oh. So I'm still recovering from that. Oh, so but sorry. we will we'll pray for you, Adam, and for your family. I, you have family. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for for that. Yes, I would need that, but. My immediate family, thank God, thank God, uh, came to Christ. I have a Great testimony. God. I will send it to you. Great. Great God. My, I'm hearing it. Yeah, my wife was, uh, I was, uh, they, there was a time when I was an atheist, and then I became a Christian believer in Christ. Okay. And she, believer? she started mm -hmm. taking uh, prescription medicine for hypertension and uh, anxiety of all that what was happening. So there was this. this there's a there's a length of a time in my life where uh, 
there was a lot of things happening because sure. you know by as a muslim female muslima you sure. cannot be in marriage with a person who is oh, yeah. not believer of allah yeah. and muhammad so <clears throat> like we lived in under the same roof but uh, the only thing that kept her to be under the same roof with me was the kids yeah that she was like what will happen to the sure. kids and she said do not even say a thing to my my kids sure and uh, so <clears throat> from there to a point that i said i will not take the water baptism alone yeah. i will wait for you Praise so God. that's what i proclaimed Amen. and then finally 7 8 months later we both took the baptism together on the same day <laughs> so i know from my heart i was believing in christ but i did not publicly took the baptism even yeah. though there is not very public we never took any videos or something like that because it sure. has to be yeah. uh hidden uh, but once again <clears throat> so we went through yeah. many things <clears throat> i will send you uh the the testimony because yesterday on eric show eric smith actually had a show and i had a, a lengthier testimony over there yeah and i will send it to you for you great. to listen well great praise god um the little book i did on discipling middle eastern believers it has many of these kind of stories um uh, uh we had a we had a man in the in the west bank near Khalil near Hebron and uh, he came to the Lord and his he lived with his wife and her aunt and when he came to the Lord his wife then froze up on him wouldn't sleep with him anymore and the aunt of course was after her to make sure she was staying a muslimi and not going with her kafir husband <laughs> he came to us he came to us and my friend Barnabas who was working with them Barnabas yeah. and said look he says I have I've gone six months. My wife won't sleep with me. Can you please give me a Christian wife so I can at least have a marriage? And I said, well, how long did it take you to become a believer? He said, oh, about six or eight years. I said, well, how long do you think it's going to take your wife to become a believer? <laughs> She's got her hands on her all the time, you know? looking after everything she does to keep sure she stays a Muslim. So anyway, about, oh, six months later, he calls me up. He says, my wife, she's my wife again. Wow. <laughs> so it takes, it takes time, man. It's, yes, it's it hard. does. And particularly does. when you're under the threat of death and you have other relatives staring you down about it. So God bless you and God keep you. And your wife, amen. And Thank then you. so cool. We'll pray for you, brother. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, brother Ray, for coming on today. It was, a, it was such a. I had no idea I was on. I just turned on the Facebook and saw you. I know I do was left. <laughs> anytime, anytime you see us, please come on. It's always wonderful to have you. And, and then quite often, quite often, my cousins are here, and they all speak Arabic. They're all from Der Dibuen. You know, near oh, Habibi, Habibi. Yeah, so you can I'm, come and talk to them. They'd love to hear some Arabic. So that'll be great. Yeah. Amen. And you know and you understand the Palestinian Yeah. Rock hard uh soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. God bless you. I gotta go to work. So Okay, bye bye. Thank you. My Thank